Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. My name is Tatiana Fedorenchik, Director of Global Product Marketing at Virtuosa. And before moving on to, with our topic, I just want to mention that we are open to all your questions. So please don't hesitate to use the question tab and chat during our conversation, and we will address all those questions uh, at the end of the webinar. Today, we will delve into the latest trends and challenges so in the security of cloud hosting industry. Uh, we will explore critical issues such as the impact of security on customer loyalty and the transformative role of AI. In addition to that, uh, we will show you how Virtuoso, Trend Hosting, and Bitninja work together to provide a comprehensive uh, and secure environment for your applications. And uh, the expert who will lead us through all the specifics today, I'm Mark, Product Manager at Bitninja, and Mustafa, CTO at Trend Hosting. Thank you guys for joining our discussion. Thank you. Great. So I think a good start will be to show how our three companies are interconnected. And as you see on the slide, uh, within Virtuoso product portfolio, we have an extensive application platform that is designed uh, to automate and simplify deployment, scaling, clustering, and security updates of both traditional and cloud-native applications. Uh, the platform helps to eliminate the complexity of IT infrastructure, configuration, and management, allowing companies to refocus on their own growth. And we work with uh, service providers such as Trend Hosting to offer our platform on top of their robust uh, infrastructure across different countries and ensure that the customers get the best local support and, uh, of course, personalized managed services from such trusted partners. Uh, Mustafa, can you share a bit of details about trend hosting? Sure. Um, but we are coming like from a classic web hosting provider in business since 97. We did in the past uh, mainly shared hosting and dedicated hosting. And since eight years, we are utilizing Virtuoso platform to deliver and to be flexible to run, to run all these bigger application and workloads we have. So at the moment, that's uh, definitely our main working horse, the uh, Virtuoso platform. And the main data center is in Zurich, Switzerland. That's like the biggest one. And we have another one in Germany. I'm planning a third one also in Switzerland. So we use Virtuoso for all the workload and we use BitNinja as our like protection stack over all the platforms we have, if it's Virtuoso or some old shared hosting server. That's great. Yeah, this is a real long-term relationship between yeah. Virtuoso and Trend Hosting already. Uh, so yeah, on top of this, as Mustafa already mentioned, we have a great technology partner, Bitninja, whose proven security solution is integrated right inside directly into Virtual's application platform. And it's done so to make sure that customers sleep well, feeling that their applications are fully protected. Mark, if you worried about Bitninja. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's uh, one of my favorite models that uh, Ninja's not as if so you can, um, because just a little back for it, that Ninja, that uh, our CEO uh, and the founder of Ninja, George, uh, was a uh, hosting, uh, had a hosting business. And basically, Ninja came to the need that her, his servers were getting attacked a lot, um, and there was no solution in the market to cover these attacks. And then so he made Ninja to basically um, figure it out and uh, block all these effects. And we've been doing this since 2014. So I'm throwing a broad right now from Bertham. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best to keep up. Um, and these little slides that the token is showing is um, from a study in 2017 it happened. Uh, and this is basically showing that I know uh, the, the person who is not at 100, uh, it's because it's not a, uh, that type of uh, percentages. It's basically saying that uh, of companies, how many types of attack they have experienced. And you can see that um, there are many of those ransomware and many political and insider threats as well. Um, and 
the best way to solve these is to have a very secure layer in front of these because there's just no other way of going about it. You cannot go naked into the internet basically with your servers because um, then you will, of course, get uh, attacked in one way or another. And yeah, I think we can move on to the next ones. And these are just some uh, interesting numbers about Bitinger's protection because we have a centralized dashboard and a centralized uh, DFS network um, that all of the servers are part of. So they basically create a little herd immunity to protect each other. Um, and you can see the results of this is that um, we had uh, 300,000 malicious files caught in a single day in May. Um, that's like 13,000 uh, malicious files in an hour. And then for it, it's 21,000, um, which is not the uh, IP incidents because the IP incidents are a lot more. Um, which you can see that in May, we had more than 110 million uh, IP incidents, which are just your normal um, attacks against your servers, just your everyday stuff that folks are trying to connect and get data out of your machines and files that they shouldn't really access. Um, and then BitNJ is great at stopping these and then spreading this information to your and uh, the other servers that have part of the DNS. Yeah, great. Thank you for these insights <laughs> from the market. And uh, yeah, Mustafa, what about you? What is your most recent experience in trend hosting in terms of new attacks? Um, well, what we see, we mostly run big e-commerce website or big commerce website. We have also some uh, political website let's say it's uh, parts from the swiss army or whatever uh, what we see is that people get attacked um two different reasons they get attacked because they have been unlucky they just get attacked because um they had a bad ip somebody tried or or just random attack not really targeted against those people and that are mostly attacks which are not really that uh, they're not going long. And what we see are really targeted attacks, which are going over so days or even weeks, trying to bring a website down. And, and the main, uh, main reason we see that is that people are trying to get some Bitcoins or whatever stuff, like forcing people to, play, uh, to pay to stop the attack. So that, that, that's what we see, um, let's say, in the last year, two years. I mean, I think back like 10 years ago, we didn't have such stuff. We had mostly people trying to deface stuff, defacement and stuff like that. And now you see mostly it's, it's, it's mainly going about money, about, uh, about forcing the customer to pay so that the attack stops. Yes, exactly. And uh, that very well ties into what we see uh, in the changing landscape of uh, cybersecurity because back in the day, um, defacing attacks with not often mentioned here, much more common than lately. And then just random ports because back in the day, um, vulnerable ports were much more easily accessible for servers. Um, and they weren't, people weren't caring that much about those, especially in like shared servers and stuff like this, which there were many of. Um, then those attacks could really ramp up and ruin your day. Um, and the thing is that uh, we had many sleepless nights back in the hosting <laughs> days of uh, of uh, Ninja that uh, they were calling like, hey, these servers are slowing down and uh, they can't reach sites and stuff like this. And that's why um, Ninja came to be. And uh, that's how we stopped it. And I think Gustav also had his fair share of these uh, <laughs> back in the day. So. Yeah, we, yeah sorry. Um, but I can say we have definitely customer taking care of their application to have mostly also development teams, IT teams, whatever, really taking care of the application. But there is still this uh, zero day stuff. You can't just roll out update each day and each hour. Uh, so you really have to have like a, a defense lane uh, in front of you, which can take care till the customer is ready. As you know, sometimes it's it's uh, even months after the release test or not updated. But people are really taking care, and it's good to see that people uh, take security more seriously until in the last years than they did like ten years before. But still, it's it's just not realistic to to expect the customer to like one hour after the release uh, they update the application. It's it's still still not realistic. So it's really important to have to have like a defense lane in front of the application. Is it web application firewall or, or the last one to malware engine, uh, which is trying to catch the bad stuff? 
So it's, it's yeah. And it's, it's what we also see uh, security is just not about the technical stuff. It's, it's always when we have the customer on the phone or whatever, it's always a bit of teaching and uh, about also this social engineering part. So it, it doesn't make sense if you do all this web application firewall and protection stuff. And then just the customer gives credentials out to somebody he knows on the internet for five minutes because he made him a good price to update the, the, the software. So it's it, it goes hand in hand. And that, that's what we see also people just, and then getting in panic and, and yes, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's the social part and the technical one. Exactly. Uh, so the thing is that, the human will be always the weakest part, I think, the weakest link in this chain, because you can do everything you want to protect the machine, but you cannot stop people from handing out passwords uh, to, to random developers that they find somewhere. Um, and as well, you, you mentioned that uh, people try to update their stuff, um, but they cannot be on top of it all the time. They might be on holiday for a week, weekend, um, and then there's a new vulnerability reported. Uh, this is why it's very important, because the thing what they will do is Basically, bad bots will try and find that one of it is on a website, be it a plugin or like a WordPress version that they're going to in the past, um, or just anything else to set up. And then if they find it, they will just store it. And then whenever a person is ready to go in, they will try to target the plugins that website. Uh, it might be automated or it might be manual by someone. It depends on how complex it is, of course. Um, but this is by having a vulnerability patch either virtually or on a site level is very, very important. Um, and it ties very well into what, what we do at Jetninja. Um, because with WebX and Fireball, we do virtual patching, um, which is like the zero day stuff usually that's fast and that's easy to patch. Uh, with this type of uh, solution, this is done by WebX by and Fireball against common uh, vulnerabilities found in WordPress plugins, um, just basic WordPress versions. And then the other stuff is what we do is the firebase patching, um, because you cannot always patch everything with virtual patching with version firewall. Because the thing is that sometimes it can cause just too many false positives, um, and it's not good for the website when it's not good for anybody. Um, so that's why we made the choice to include the file patching in different buffering, um, because sometimes patching on the file is uh, more convenient and uh, safer. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we see with in, in the log files actually. The the bad guy he knows before the customers knows that you have that specific module or CMS running. And actually when, when there is ex exploit out, you can just wait in two, three minutes, you will see the first tries uh, in, in the log file. So it's it's and it's still not realistic that somebody is just on top of that to keep the application updated. Just in in a, in a short amount of time, you have a testing and development and, and and stuff like that, and people actually want to check if the application still works. It doesn't make sense just to blindly update and break everything. It's 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 no win at the end. So it's yeah, it's it's really about yeah about having something who, what is flexible, and and that's also how we roll out uh, BitNinja to all our customers. It's an easy solution. It does a lot automatically, but still, um, we take our times to do some fine tuning, especially when it when it when it comes to the web application firewall, because we have also tested a lot of solution. And if somebody is going to sell you something and he says, "Look, it does everything automatically," then yeah, that's super fine. But uh, it it most likely will then let too many stuff through. So it's it's always a good that you really to look at it, take the time. I mean, it's not like days of work, but still one, two hours to put the web application firewall first in, in log only modus, check with the customer. Is that something which, which, which will not be blocked or, or is that okay to block and stuff like that? And it's, I mean, the, the tools we have today, they makes it pretty easy. A lot is, is just shoot it and, and forget it, but still it, it, it makes sense to take some time to check also with the customer especially if he's running big application. If it's like a standard WordPress application, there is more or less nothing to care about. But if it's like a self-deployed application, uh, it, it makes sense to check it because you guys have uh, the standard stacks really pretty much, you know what you're doing, but when there is a custom application, it's just impossible that you know what that application is doing. So it, it, it makes sense to take the time 
and it's just worth afterwards it's it's just easy to to run stuff like that and yes exactly um i i think uh that security is always trade off so it's it's a trade off between how much risk you are willing to take and how um much false positives or less of them you want um and how much effects you let through this way because the thing is that more false positives you come with more security of course um, but it also comes at the expense of dealing with customer issues and stuff like this and that's why most of these uh big trend platforms um they are very very on top of this because um they will go out of their way and test with the uh, with the with the user and their specific use case uh, which rules work which rules don't how much effects they want to or uh, how little they want um and it's this this is the trend of with ninja in general, because we do um, allow people to configure it however they, they want to. Um, but we, of course, come with a, like a reasonably safe uh, field configuration with Bitmanager to let people exp uh, experience security, um, but of course, not cause uh, false positives and issues to that. And this is why it's a crucial part to, to basically check and uh, figure out what works best for you. Yeah, yeah, about that. Actually, that's, I mean, we are somehow in the middle. We face the customer, but we are the customer of you on the virtuoso. So that's why it's important to us to have somebody in the background which can handle stuff we can't. At the beginning, we had, uh, we used a lot of Magento, that's uh, e commerce stack and Typo3, a CMS stack. And in the beginning, we had some uh, false positive stuff we reported to you and you managed. Uh, to build a rule stack around that, that it, the application is protected and, and still the the functions you want to work, they still work. So it's 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 always important for us to have somebody in the background who is taking care. The same also with Virtuoso. So if if they do a bad job or you do a bad job, we can't do a better one in front of the customer. So it's it's really important to yeah to get that done and, and to have somebody taking care. Is it virtuous or, or you guys? So yes, exactly. Um, in the meantime, sorry, I didn't really catch the last part because my internet is breaking up. Uh, <laughs> that the sound is fine. Yeah, sorry guys for this uh, a bit of uh, noise on the background from Mark and like the sound audio. Yeah, as Mark is mentioned and uh, has mentioned in the chat, he's traveling, so there might be some issues. But uh, for you to know, like later after this uh, discussion, and I hope it will improve, <laughs> like uh, uh, the sound wise. Uh, after the discussion, there will be also live demo, and it will be shown by me and Mustafa. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, I think my internet is fixed now. Thank you, Tatiana, for jumping in quickly. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so look up, I wanted to ask you, um, since uh, you usually chat a lot with Christopher, uh, that's no secret. <laughs> um, but you mentioned me lately that uh, they were having, they or they have seen issues in the past uh, where people were trying to cause load on the machines and stuff like this, uh, either via attacks or uh, like extended attacks to the DOS and stuff like this. Um, could you tell more about this here as well, Mr. So, sorry, I didn't get the question. Uh, maybe you want to type it in the chat. And <laughs> sorry, mate. Wait, let, let me try again. Mm -hmm. uh, because so uh, we we uh, discussed recently about uh, effects regarding load and uh, how to find malicious files. Yeah, um, that you did uh, some. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, it's 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 when something is on the server in the past, it, it was really a pain in the back uh, to find actually what's what's going wrong. It's easy if you have a dedicated container machine or whatever, you know the application which is running. And if you log to that machine, you can be pretty fast finding out uh, a process you don't want on that machine. But if you have a shared server or a server uh, a server infrastructure with multiple um, application, it's really a waste of time. Actually, we did at the end we did go back to to that point where we had to analyze the outgoing traffic of that machine, 
actually to be able to identify the process, which was malware or a bad process. And as you can imagine, on a public server with multiple application on it, it's just hours and hours of work. And, and pretty much it's uh, actually after like 10 hours, if you find the process, you clean that stuff up, you feel good about it because you think, look, it's killed, it's removed. And then you log in like 30 minutes later and then it's just back and online and doing the bad stuff again. So it, it was really a, a frustrating job and, and time consuming job. Uh, so it's we are happy that we now have tools which which helps with that. Maybe you you can say about more about the technical stuff. We just know it works. It saves us a lot of time. Uh, that's the most important for us. But but actually that was really a big time consuming task, and actually it's not something you can ignore. At least we do not feel safe if you know. Look, there is something on the server doing something bad. I mean, I cannot go to sleep knowing that. So you just have to dig through all that stuff and the outgoing traffic. Uh, and TCP dump is a super nice tool, but it's extremely hard to catch stuff if you have a public server, which you want to communicate to outside, yeah. Exactly, I, I we know it all too well. That's why I ask because um, I, as, as Mustafa has mentioned as well, that it's, it, it's possible, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you have to use a tool to secure service um it just helps it saves a lot of lot of time uh because you can go out of your way and uh, try to find malicious files one by one and analyze them and what they do what they try to communicate with and stuff like this but uh, on like a vps one two websites it's perfect fine you can do that um but with the bigger hosting uh, servers that have multiple websites and stuff like this then it will uh, become a such a chore that you just have no chance even if you catch it as Mr. mentioned, it can come back very, very easily. Um, and this is why uh, we realized the need for this as well. Um, and we actually found and uh, published a new uh, signature against the new Umova family um, that will, is, is, which is actually very, very smart. So don't get me wrong, um, <laughs> hackers, hackers can be smart as well, uh, of course, because it's always a cat and mouse with the security and uh, attack attacks against these. Um, and we have another new family that basically will work as like a peer-to-peer -peer network, so kind of like a torrent. Um, and what they will do is they are checking house of other infected servers and websites on them. And then if you if they see that they, this server has been cleaned up, then they will go out and reinfect it with the same malicious files. And then the trickiest part is that the process that's doing this is not on a file level. So it creates itself for a very, very short amount of time, starts the process, and then the file is gone. And then from that point on, it only exists in memory. And that's why it was extremely hard to track this down, um, because we have spent considerable amounts of time to fight against this and figure out what is uh, what is the best solution. And for this, we have rolled out the process analysis module, uh, which is a very, very new addition to it, just so you will not find it on the dashboard just yet. Um, we are testing it out in multiple servers and multiple websites um, and find out uh, where, where these infections are present. Because, of course, we can publish the images for the known files, uh, but they will not be as effective as stopping the uh, process in the memory. Um, and, and and that's why we have, uh, we have been very, very uh, keen on doing this for a long time now. And we are very happy to, to have found this because uh, it was actually very, very nice to you be able to understand and catch this, catch them red-handed as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, you, you can do it manually and actually it's it's important to know your operating system. I mean, if, if you we have only Linux and, and uh, BSD servers, so it's important to know all the tools you have on board on your operating system to be able to debug the stuff by yourself. But it's just not, not realistic, especially I can imagine in, in, in bigger shared hosting environments, you, you will just never get the job done because you clean one stuff up and, and you have three others popping up. So it's, it's uh... but anyway, it, it is important to, to know what you're doing on, on the operating system anyway. So it's, it's worth to put in the time to learn also the tools yeah, actually to be able to manually check stuff like, uh, I mean, we know are talking a bit about security and, and, and uh, your stack and whatever, but there is also a lot of other stuff 
making the big pictures uh, of site backups, backups having not online and stuff like that. I mean, we are in the business since 97 and, and we have seen a lot of bad stuff happening. People we know, companies we know, uh, backups getting wiped out and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's not a technical issue. It's more how you set up everything. And it's definitely worth the time to, from time to time, to sit down, take the time, and overthink about really everything, every part. Like, does does that backup needs to be accessible and available to anyone? And and I mean, if you have one restore, maybe better do that manually. Don't let the customer do the restore. But you know, the backups are separated; they are safe. If somebody got the credentials of the customer, he cannot hurt. The backups, backups and stuff like that. So it's it's really about a lot of different parts com, coming together till till you really can sleep well and say, look, I'm more or less safe and and, and ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, sorry to bring another topic into this conversation, but uh, we we've talked a lot about AI before. Uh, and no, 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 don't don't take the lead button, everybody. I know everybody is AI and everybody talks about AI. Um, but the thing is that you just simply cannot ignore uh, AI because the fact is that AI is everywhere and it's not just in the hands of the good guys, uh, like hosting providers and stuff that, uh, uh, like your normal uh, users. It's also in the hands of hackers and, and buddies who are trying to get into your servers and infect your machine. Um, and the thing is that AI, will be, AI is evolving so fast that you just cannot say, oh no, you don't want to be an AI company, you don't want to implement AI into your solution in one way or another, because then you will just get uh, left behind, basically. Um, and so this is why we, we felt the strong need to have an AI model implemented into Bitninja's malware detection. Um, but we don't trust ChatGPT. We don't trust uh, other companies who might be not so secure with their data. Um, so based on this, we have implemented our very own AI model. Um, which we are training constantly and running inference on a supercomputer um, to basically analyze and find zero-day malicious files that have not been bought before by Bitinja or by anybody else. For that matter. Um, and um, it's it's uh, live in the agent as well. It's not running on your server. We are basically analyzing files that we know of um, in, in the cloud. Uh, so it's not asking the option, of course, um, but it's, bringing very, very good results uh, to, to the point where we couldn't reach before with just human manpower. Because at the end of the day, um, there will be obvious cases where you will have to analyze files manually, um, because either they are just to, you know, on the edge of being malicious or legitimate or poorly written, for example. Um, so that's why we have to always have a manual layer in order not to cause false positives and to figure out how it works. Um, but AI is helping like a lot in analyzing this file in advance. It's like a free filter what we use it for. Yeah, yeah, actually, good to hear you're you're on track on that. But but I can say from from the last twenty years is there are people out with uh, enough criminal activity, if you can say that, or energy, and you had that in the past too. Uh, you had these uh, stress networks or DDoS networks, and actually, you will find some competition of your company which is going to pay to bring you down. And I can imagine if these AI tools will go in that direction that you can pay somewhere, he will analyze you as target and then try to sneak in. You, you can be sure there will be people outside doing that. So um, like the same in, in the past with DDoS, we, we, we had like three companies fighting each other over our infrastructure and stuff like that. Actually, you don't know if, if, if it's that, that one, but it, Everything else doesn't make sense because even in the back, you have to pay for this DDoS volume if, if you want to attack somebody. So I, I definitely see that once these AI attack tools are, are available, there are people outside that definitely will use that and, 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 and try to yeah utilize that. Yeah, we definitely need to combine uh, the brains of three of our companies. Mm -hmm together with AI <laughs> forces in order to overplay AI that can harm anyone. And I'm pretty sure we will do that and we are already doing that. So how you guys can uh, get started with uh, any of the, before we go into the demo, uh, we can show you how you can get started with Bitninja. 
Uh, to begin with, I'm going uh, to show you the dashboard to the panel where our customers are working with Virtuoso application platform and uh, how everything is smooth and easy there. So let me go to the dashboard. Do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Perfect. So this is a demo platform of uh, Bertolt's application platform. And uh, this is the uh, fill and look, the UI, the end customers of Bertolt's are using in order to manage their applications. Uh, to begin with, I will give a short uh, excursion around how you can get started. For instance, uh, you can create a new environment here, and it's a matter of several clicks uh, for you. You can choose the application server you want to work with, the version of that application server. You can scale it. And as you see, while scaling, I'm getting load balancer automatically that will distribute the traffic uh, uh, among these servers. You can also scale these servers vertically and the vertical scaling will be uh, provided as well automatically. Uh, I can set up scaling maximum scaling limit and uh, the system will provide the needed resources based on the load that your application is having at a specific uh, uh, time. And uh, I can set up, for instance, okay, I want to, my servers to use not more than five gigabytes. And uh, the system will see, okay, you are using right now around two gigabytes. Uh, we will provide you these two gigabytes and you will pay only for those two gigabytes. So this is a great benefit for the end customers that they are not overpaying for the resources they are not really consuming. Uh, but if you're sure that your, um, for instance, your application is using one gigabyte every hour, 100% always, uh, then you can cut your costs a bit because reserved resources are usually cheaper. So you can set up, okay, the reserved resources, I will have like one gigabyte, for instance, and uh, you will pay for these resources uh, every time, but you know, like your application anyway is using them. Uh, so you reserve them, you pay less, and you feel secure with maximum scaling limit. When the, your application is growing, the load is growing, you will receive the needed uh, resources. Uh, so also here you have a choice of different databases, uh, SQL databases, no SQL, uh, databases in SQL databases, uh, you you can also choose like different versions. And uh, here you can scale these databases manually, horizontally. You can also set up vertical scaling limits, and they will be scaled automatically. But in addition to that, you have automated clustering. You can just enable this clustering. As you see by default, I've got primary secondary uh, clusterization. You see that I've got extra nodes, specific amount of resources required. And you also see that we've got a proxy server to, uh, to work with these databases. And uh, you have a choice. You can go with primary, 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 secondary, or Galera cluster. If I click on Galera cluster, you see the nodes are growing, like we already have three, because this is like minimum requirement for Galera. And you don't need to do anything manually. Basically, the system already prepackaged these database clusters for you. You just click install and you're up and running to, to work with that. Uh, we have extra uh, nodes here, for instance, uh, storage, or uh, VPS is like uh, Alma Linux, the pure one where you can install whatever you need to install inside. Uh, and also we have option for Docker images uh, where you can go to the public repository and uh, uh, find something there um, and install from this repository. Or if you have your custom repository, you can go there, you can attach your repository and use your own images here. Uh, so all of these uh, stacks, uh, certified stacks and uh, Docker images, they are running inside containers and uh, they are getting this uh, uh, opportunity to have automated vertical scaling and uh, pay per use pricing model based on your real consumption. Uh, so also, as uh, Mustafa was mentioning, that uh, for instance, trend hosting has several data centers in different countries. So the customers in this case have a choice. 
in what data center they want to create this environment. So in our demo environment, you can see the choice of different uh, um, regions. The same you will see in, uh, uh, in the uh, dashboard of Mustafa and Trend Hosting. Uh, you will decide, okay, I want to go to the German uh, data center, I want to go to the uh, Swiss data center, or like uh, uh, the choice of your uh, needs. And then you just click create, and you get the environment similar to this one. For instance, I pre-created it not to use the time of the demo. Uh, you see the environment itself, you see different settings here from necessity, for instance, to attach custom domain or to apply some custom SSL. Uh, here you can also set up automated uh, horizontal scaling. Uh, for instance, you know like that your environment is going to grow and uh, you want your servers to be available all the time. So you can set up automated scaling on your application servers or any other nodes uh, based on CPU, based on memory, or based on uh, a network, different resources. Here you set up, okay, if uh, uh, my load is over than like 45%, for instance, during five minutes, please scale out my nodes like up to five, one by one or two at a time. Uh, then the same about removing rules. Like if the load is lower than you know, like 20%, please scale down. Like if it's going to be during 10 minutes, scale down up to two nodes, for instance, one by one or several nodes in, in a range. And you also can enable uh, uh, email notifications about uh, these processes. So every time that the load goes upper than this threshold, you will receive extra nodes to your environment and they will be added automatically. Uh, if uh, the load goes down, they will be taken automatically and you will receive notification. Okay, your environment is configured differently right now because of the load. Uh, different other options of settings, you can play around here later and uh, uh, figure out, but today we are talking about security and Bitnita specifically. So I'm going to show you how that works here. Uh, within this uh, uh, node, you can see add-ons. And uh, for instance, here on the servers, you, you can see beneath the service. The only thing that you need to do is just click install, check where you're installing it, on what node, and again, click install. The process will start automatically. It's going to be done on the background. You don't need to do anything else. And as a result, uh, uh, you will get this beneath your service uh, um, in, installed on your uh, nodes. You can install it on different nodes. I would say like if you have especially several application servers, this is logical to install it on load balancer to secure the entry point. And uh, the same thing I did for my environment. I installed it uh, previously on the load balancer. Here you can see after installation, you get the button uh, to get to the admin panel of BitNinja. Uh, during the initial entrance, you will be asked to fill in the credentials and you will receive those credentials as email notification. And here you will see your node uh, that is attached uh, to BitNinja service. Uh, also, like if needed, you can uninstall it anytime here. So all these uh, uh, exercises can be done from the uh, add-ons, uh, from the environment itself. Or you can also go to the marketplace because we have uh, in uh, Virtuoso, we have a marketplace of different applications uh, that are pre-configured, similar to the uh, database clusterization that I was showing that can be like just click, click and you get it. Uh, same, we have different applications, uh, for instance, like uh, WordPress uh, or uh, Magenta, or even you can see that we have like Kubernetes cluster or different versions of these applications. Similarly, we have add-ons here, and we have Bitninja available as add-on here. In this case, you will give you will get a choice on what environment you want to install it, on what uh, server, on what uh, uh, server you want to install it. You choose what is uh, required here, click install, and again, you get it automatically installed up and running on your server. So this is just in short, like how to get the entry point to the Bitnisa. And uh, I will give uh, screen sharing uh, to Mustafa because he's going to show you 
how to work with Bitnin's admin panel, how he is a service provider who's offering uh, these services to the customers and his customers can use Bitnin's uh, from the customer perspective. Sure, thank you. Uh, Let me try to share as being a noob in Zoom. By the way, Mark, you owe me a beer for showing your software to others. <clears throat> do you see it? Yes. We okay. do. Yeah, that's that's like the standard dashboard. I'm not going to waste too much time. Uh, actually, just go download the install it and try it yourself. We have here the status of the last 30 days on our infrastructure. You see, it's a lot of stuff happening. And, and like I said, keep in mind, we have really people taking care of our applications, of their applications. So I can imagine that in, in hardcore shared hosting uh, servers, the, the stats will even be worse. What you also have here is the status of your infrastructure, of your server. Everything was super nice and green uh, as it was updated by, I think you had an uh, agent release two days ago. So yeah, yeah, yeah. back to yellow. Recently. Exactly. So we have to update again, and that that's nice. Uh, actually, you see the, the, the status of your infrastructure really fast here. If if everything is going down, we have here two three nodes shut it down, and like the the the, the most thing we use is actually having the incidents um, screen open uh, to see what's happening. And most important uh, type is actually to, to analyze if somebody like hit it by a drive-by attack or is it something targeted? Uh, it's actually the indicator here of the type of the attack. You see here port on a pod. That means that somebody uh, hit the port where is actually no service behind it. BitNinja did a, a, like a honey pod around that port. So you that that's not really targeted that somebody is scanning your network, but it's it's good to have such guys blocked and and that's what Mark mentioned is about this defense network. If another Bit Ninja customer is getting attacked, that one guy can't even try to attack us and to scan us because he's already blocked because of his reputation and stuff like that. And like I said, what we use a lot is the web application firewall where we can see, um, especially when we when we onboard new um, new customer, you see we, we put it in log-only modus. We can watch that for maybe seven days before we fine tune the rules and, and go into blocking mode. And actually that's something you do with, with every firewall you have. Like I said, if, if somebody is, is telling you that there is no need for such approach, it will most likely not really work. But, um, and, and you see we, and, that are most likely targeted attacks because that's somebody which did some pre-work, he analyzed the application and it's trying to misuse uh, maybe unknown vector attack or an unknown or whatever. So that, that's always a good indicator for us. Um, and, and that's mostly what we have open incidents. And if, if a customers uh, um, give us a call or whatever, that's actually the first thing we do. Look. If something getting blocked, uh, if something happening before you dig deeper into stuff like that, and uh, like my uh, Mark said, they have different modules. Uh, also, new one introduced like this patch management stuff. We didn't touch it because it's super new. But actually, it's it's the overview is nice. You you have really easy approach to the different modules and the configurations of that. But like. The buff one thing is the one we mostly use and the incident screen uh, where we easy can, can filter the attack types and, and stuff like that. As you see, really, again, back to the default exactly. screen. So, um, sorry, myself, I just wanted to say that, uh, yes, uh, um, many of the hosting providers also use most of the incident management page because that's where you can see what's happening on the machine. So as with the machine, we see all types of attack here and just drive by effect. Stuff like this, uh, but also some specific ones. And the good thing about this is that uh, you can see it past four levels. So it's not just one server. Of course, you can filter it down the servers, uh, but you can see all of your customers at once. Um, and you can even like filter down to specific types of incidents and what happened to them and stuff like this. So and that's why it's pretty cool. Um, and you can even, uh, with the version of Fiber, for example, you can turn off that specific tool for that domain from this page. So if you think it's a false positive or like your customer, like, hey, can we make this rule 
uh, disabled because I want to have a certain plugin installed or stuff like this, because um, some plugins manipulate WordPress files, which can cause false positives. Um, it happens with every uh, admin version firewall, I would say. Um, yeah. And then you can disable it right from here. Um, and yeah, I think Mustafa at all did a really great job at showing us <laughs> what, what, what they are doing with the dashboard. Exactly. I will I will just try to filter again just to show what you have said. It's about this WAF rules with with got hit. Actually, you see which rule um, got triggered. And if I'm not wrong, you can hear details. Um, you see what what's happening. What what has triggered the stuff, and then it's the time to decide if it's a false positive or not. But like I said, I will always choose to have some false positive tend to let the attack through. So it's 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 always really important to take the time and then to fine tune that stuff. Uh, yeah, that, that's that. It's about it. Yeah, and as I said, it's it's um, it can be scary. Definitely, somebody who doesn't have anything like that, especially in shared hosting environments. The first time you install it and after two, three hours, you check the logs actually to see how much stuff is going on. You don't even notice that without any solution or with heavy monitoring. We also do, but it's it's then really tricky to get the, just the security part out of all the aggregate logs. So it's super handy to, to have this incident uh, overview here, yeah. Fantastic. And just one extra thing, uh, Mustafa, if you don't mind, could you click on the configuration that page just briefly? Okay. Yeah. So the thing here is that uh, I've mentioned that it's highly customizable. Um, and this is what we mean by that. So um, you basically have all of your servers here. You can manage them by groups or by single server level or by whole hand level. And you can basically fine tune it to your needs, disable stuff, enable settings, and set it up how you want it to be. Um, and, and this is our one of our greatest strengths, I think, because um, we allow you to do anything you want. So everything that is on configuration, you can enable or disable it, and it's perfectly up to you to decide. Good. I'm trying to stop the sharing if I know how. I don't know if you can stop that. Uh, I think it's gone now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Great. So to, let's move on. And before we are going to the questions, because I see already some uh, questions uh, in the Q&A tab, please move on and like uh, have some extra questions added as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would just highlight how you can get started with the uh, uh, virtual application platform. For instance, if you want to have installation similar as Mustafa has with trend hosting on their own data centers, uh, same on yours, uh, you can get in touch with us using the link. I've pasted that link in the chat as well. And uh, uh, also, uh, just for you to know that uh, Virtual's application platform, it can be installed on any infrastructure. It can be bare metal or it can be any kind of infrastructure as a service. Uh, if you want to move on with the uh, application hosting with trusted partner as trend hosting, you can get in touch with Mustafa and his team uh, in their website. I will place the link as well in the chat uh, later. Uh, and uh, in this case, you're going to get uh, infrastructure covered by trend hosting team, and uh, you will be fully focused on the application layer and uh, on developing your application or developing your business in general. Uh, and uh, of course, if you have extra questions about uh, uh, Bitninja as a technology and uh, Bitninja functionality, you can get in touch with Mark and the team uh, using the uh, the link as well. And I will paste it in the chat uh, uh, as well. And now we can move on to the questions as we have some <laughs> already. Uh, first one, Bitninja is the first level of security you provide to VMs or it is a own security, or there is some type of uh, default security you have. Mustafa, I guess that uh, you can... Yeah, I think also you missed one question from uh, Aman. He's asking about, I think, our connection. We are just a virtuoso customer, and by the way, our installation is on bare metal. So we provide the hardware and uh, the virtuoso um, 
validity installation configuration together with us. Yeah, about the security, we have, um, actually we have BitNinja, we have also some other security stuff in place. BitNinja is definitely like the, the main web application firewall we have, malware stuff and stuff like that. But what we have additionally on top of that, BitNinja is good when it comes to DDoS on let's say layer seven of the application. You can do some rate limiting stuff like that. But actually then the attacker is already hitting, hitting your server. So you're trying to block that. What we have in place and that has nothing to do with Virtuoso nor uh, BitNinja because it will also be the wrong place. We have some network protection. So right for, for these big volume attacks into terabit per second, we have BGP flow spec based uh, protection. Um, so it's, 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 it's a combo of, of, of these different solutions we have in place at this. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, the, the question, I guess this is more to Mark and Bitnizzi team, is there included IPS signature based? Uh, oh yeah, okay. Uh, so basically Bitnizzi has, uh, we have a database of known IP addresses that we have some information on, um, which contains like more than 100 million at this point, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, and what we do is um, they basically will, we differentiate between multiple layers or strengths uh, of list. Uh, one of them is your user list, and the other one is the uh, global list. So your user list is, of course, only for you and your service. Um, but the, oh, sorry, just a second. <laughs> yeah, so your user base is uh, only for your servers, but the global base is for every bit of the server. And how it can, uh, it will basically move from user base to global level if it affects more and more servers. So once they generate incidents, then they will uh, move on to the global list and your servers will protect it as well. Okay, perfect. And uh, how to protect the zero day attack? Do you have sandboxing technologies to protect unknown malware? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, we do. Uh, so we have a sandbox scanner module that we basically uh, emulate the PHP and JavaScript environments and then figure out what the file is trying to do within it. And then based on that, we will create a small and if high enough, then it will pass on to our automatic validation stages. Um, so basically, we create a validating malware signature. is basically a signature that we say, like, hey, this file can be potentially what isn't currently needed. Um, and then in this state, if we go through the automatic validation stages, if every one of them, if we basically like go through our AI phase and everything else, uh, and then if it is deemed malicious, then we will uh, elim uh, eliminate the file basically and create a, not a validating anymore, but warranty signature. Um, and then if it's like, hey, some something says, oh yeah, like eight, we have flags before. Um, if if uh, nine of those flags we have ten in total right now, if nine of those says it's malicious but false says it's not, uh, then it will go to the human validation phase, which is the last one to verify if it's a malicious file or a non-malicious file. Because in many cases, the um, the difference between a malicious and a non-malicious one can be very very thin, um, because it might be just a user written code uh, that of course you don't want to break a website that's running it. Um, so that's why we have to take extra care and extra steps uh, to, to verify and uh, make sure that we are quarantining something that we should have. Okay, yep, thank you. And uh, one more question, does this apply also for virtual, virtual hybrid server in addition to virtual hybrid infrastructure? Uh, that's like, I guess you're talking about Virtuoso hybrid server and Virtuoso hybrid infrastructure, uh, not virtual. Uh, yeah, we have integration of Bitninja with the, those two products as well. The user experience is uh, a bit different, like not the one that we have showed today, but uh, in general, those products are also integrated with Bitninja, so this is possible uh, to use them. Maybe just, just another input, if that's not clear, on the Virtuoso application platform, as I said, was Jelastic before, it was always the hybrid server, the hypervisor stack. So yeah. uh, the application platform makes it easy to do it with one click, uh, just to add the add-on, as you showed, Tatiana, but actually it's possible also to, to create a VM or whatever you are doing on the hybrid infrastructure 
and just to install BitNinja inside that. So yeah. it's it's whatever we throws a product you have, you you can bring BitNinja in it too. Perfect. Yeah, thank you, Mustafa. Uh, we have also one question from a man, same as AWS, and I'm not sure about what that question was about. Uh, maybe you can uh, maybe you can uh, add some context to that question. Uh, but in general, I will add here about uh, Amazon Web Services that Virtual's application platform is uh, a kind of platform as a service layer, and. Uh, uh, Amazon Web Services. Some customers, they consider Amazon Web Services as a competitive solution to Virtuoso. Uh, but for some cases, uh, AWS is more complex because it's more infrastructure management tool. And for instance, Virtuoso application platform can be even installed on top of uh, um, AWS uh, servers. And we are available in AWS marketplace for automated installation of Virtuoso application platform on top. So this uh, this is kind of a combination that can be used all together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. Any other questions, guys? We are already getting to the end of the timing, but if you still have some questions, you can drop them, and uh, uh, we will respond. If we are have no time today, we will respond them later after the webinar. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for joining. A special thank you for you, Mark, and you, Mustafa, for joining joining this webinar and having this discussion. This is very important topic, security in general and in cloud hosting world. And uh, we are insured right now that uh, together with us, uh, together through the three companies combined, our customers can sleep well and can sleep uh, like hassle-free uh, with these security tools. And uh, again, uh, just uh, to remind, if you're going to get started, feel free to use uh, uh, the links on the slide uh, to get in touch with us, with Trend Hosting or BitNinja. And uh, let's continue our conversations. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Have some good time and take care.